One of the most common problems beginners face when mixing colors and creating different shades and tones using oil paints is overmixing, which can result in muddy or unappealing gradients. In this video, we'll be learning how to mix colors and create smooth yet realistic transitions using oil paints while avoiding the most common mistakes like overmixing. So grab your palette and your oil paints and let's get started. Here are the pigments I'll use for this demonstration. I'm pretty much using my go-to palette with titanium white, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, pyrrole red, but you can use cadmium red, quinacridone rose, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, cobalt teal blue, and phthalo green yellow shade. I'm using a glass palette with a neutral gray background to see all the nuances in tones and hues. This gray background is the first tip you can take from this tutorial. It can make a pretty big difference compared to other cutters. It's neutral, it doesn't influence cutter perception in any direction, it makes the cutters look exactly as light or dark as they are, which is not the case with, let's say, a white background, for instance, which makes everything look dark in comparison. And it's neutral, so it's neither warm nor cool, it's just in the middle, which allows you to perceive all the important differences in shades between the cutters. If you're just starting and you're still not clear with, you know, materials and techniques like what palette to use, what type of paint, what medium, you can check my painting course. It's designed to help with all the technical side of painting and comes with detailed demonstrations exploring portrait, still life, and landscape. If you want to learn more, just follow the link below. Color mixing is a fundamental skill for any oil painter as it allows you to create an almost infinite range of colors and tones. And when it comes to color mixing, it matters greatly that it is done with a well-identified method. To be clear, I do have my method, which is part of my cutter course, and I have my system that's fundamental in my cutter wheel system. And by the way, you can download this cutter wheel PDF for free if you don't already have it. You'll find a link in the description below. But I don't think that only my method works and obviously there are many methods and variations each with their strengths and limitations no when i talk about methodical color mixing it can be any method that helps you create the colors you want for your paintings as long as there is a method behind color mixing improvising can work but it's also how most other mixing happens. The worst thing to try with color mixing, in my opinion, especially in the beginning, is to go without a clear method or a system to use as a reference point. Imagine playing an instrument and trying to invent the notes and the tuning before each song. It doesn't make sense. It's way too much trouble for what it is, and it will probably sound horrible. And if it doesn't, chances are that the same song could have been made with existing tonal systems anyway. And it's the same with cutter. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, the cutter wheel. Follow a method, an existing method. It can be your own unique method, your own system that you design from other methods. Have a system, any system your own or someone else's, but a system that helps you navigate the cutter space with ease, helps you understand how cutters mix and interact with each other, helps you create depth and contrast in your paintings and add interests and variety to your work. Overall, mastering the art of cutter mixing can take your oil paintings to the next level and help you to create more dynamic, and expressive works of art. The method I'm going to present to you goes like this. 50% happens on the palette and 50% happens on the canvas. So let's go for the 50% on the palette first. 50% happens before the brushes even touches the canvas. That's what a lot of beginners forget as they try to rush to fill the canvas with no real method. I want to take the time to show you how to prepare, really prepare all your colors before you can start thinking about laying them down. First, it's important to start with a clean palette and to have 
all your cutters ready to go before you begin mixing. This will make it easier to control the blending process and to create a smooth transition between cutters because if you can identify the cutters, then you can create better transitions. Next, it's important to start with small amounts of paint at first and to gradually add more as you go. This will help you to avoid overmixing the cutters and creating a, you know muddy mixtures or unappealing blends in the painting. It's also a good idea to use a palette knife and not a brush, as this will help you to create more accurate blends. The brush is just here to paint, not to mix. The problem with the brush is that it keeps a small amount of the previous cutters in the bristles and it can pollute your mixes. The method I'm going to present to you is sometimes called the closed palette. It simply means that we are going to prepare a value scale of the color that we want to paint. In this case, I want to paint skin tones, but it can be anything. If you look at my color wheel system, you can see that each hue is divided into a nine step value scale, which can help you represent the shadows and volume of an object of any given color. At least it's designed to help you build this kind of value scale. In our case, this would be approximately the scale we want. But obviously, it's best to refer to the model directly and check all the nuances, especially for skin tones, because skin doesn't have a uniform color all over the place. It gets cool or warm or pink, depending on the area. So here I create a premixed scale of six hues, but create as many as you need between three and nine. Remember that you can always mix intermediate steps, so don't bother making 50, it doesn't help. This scale is going to help us organize our brush strokes and create easy gradients that really emphasize the volume of the subject. With this method, you know exactly how to find shadow colors, midtones, and highlights. It's clearly organized so that you can focus on the most important elements of the painting process. You don't have to worry about mixing the right colors every time during the painting session. It's already there. You can just pick it up or alter it if needed. Another important tip to go with my color wheel is to select colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, such as blue and orange or turquoise and red. You can also try mixing complementary colors to your existing scale to tone it down in terms of saturation or chroma and create a more subtle and harmonious gradient with variety. What do complementaries do? They basically do a lot of things, but they neutralize each other to create a neutral a neutral gray like this pyrrole red and cobalt teal blue look if we add white it becomes gray this means that if a mixture becomes too red you can add a touch of cyan if it's too pink you can add a touch of a complementary which is green and if it's too orange you can add a touch of a complementary which is blue to pull it towards gray and tone it down now 50 percent happens on the canvas. Now, the remaining 50% obviously to create gradients happen on the canvas. Overall, creating a nice gradient, a smooth transition by gradually blending colors together takes practice and patience by starting with small amounts at least and taking your time in the beginning to carefully blend the colors. You can create some beautiful and subtle gradients early on that add depth and really interest to your oil paintings. Starting with small amounts at first and gradually add more is important in the beginning, especially in the very first layers. Don't rush it, especially for delicate areas like this one, delicate areas of the face. Starting with the darkest tone is also a good idea if you want to be more organized. So you start with the black, for example, or the darkest color of your subject. And from there, you compare each individual value next to each other and try to create a nice seamless transition from one to the next. Use a clean brush 
and remember to clean your brush with a rag or a piece of paper towel. And you can also use your palette knife to modify the organization of your palette if needed. This will help you to create a more even and seamless transition. But really remember to always keep your brush clean and pick the right amount of paint so that the previous colors that were in your brush don't pollute the next ones. For more seamless gradients, keep your paint opaque and don't make it too fluid. You want to use the brush to soften it, so it has to be a little bit heavy, it has to resist in a way. You want to visualize a clay-like texture, something that you can model with your brush. Imagine modeling with clay, well, it's almost the same. Avoid using too much medium at this point, that would just make it too runny. A medium like liquid, for instance, would make it too slippery and transparent and you would lose this opacity and this control, this clay-like texture. And also importantly, you need to paint, if you really want to make this seamless and smooth, you need to paint with opaque pigment so that the paint really has its own body, its own consistency, and brushing it doesn't uncover the, you know, the unpainted ground like it does with transparent pigments. So use the color wheel to choose colors that will blend well together and add variety to the premixed value scale. It's very important. The premixed value scale is not there to be definitive. It's there to be altered, modified by selecting colors that are opposite each other on the color wheels, such as blue and orange. You can create a more striking and dynamic gradient. You can also pull the mix towards orange with transparent red oxide, towards pink with quinacridone rose, or yellow with yellow ochre. For skin tones especially, white is very powerful. Use white to emphasize highlights and push the lightness of a value that appears to be too dull or too dark. Just pick up a touch of white with the tip of your brush, the brush that already has the right color in it, just an, a small touch of extra white and mix it directly on the canvas with the brush and create different shades and tones this way. White can be a very powerful tool in color mixing and a little bit can go a long way. Don't use pure white though. Make sure that it blends with the rest of the colors and make sure that you really blend on the canvas. It's just to add this extra bit of opacity of this whiteness just in the highlights, but very, very small areas. In general, don't be too afraid to mix colors directly on your painting because this is what the blending process is all about. This can be a great way to create you know, this more spontaneous and organic effect and you can add depth and really interest to your work. Overall, the key to successful color mixing is to experiment, practice and have fun. The more you mix colors, the more you blend colors, the better you'll become at creating beautiful and harmonious transitions. For better gradients, obviously, brushwork is key. You need soft brushes that are adapted to the area you're trying to paint, both in size and shape. I like synthetic rounds for faces as it allows me to both go for the details and also create smooth transitions. Different shades and tones can be used in a painting to create a range of effects to, to add depth to the work. By using a variety of shades and tones, you can create the illusion of depth and distance and make certain areas of the painting stand out or recede into the background. For example, using darker shades and tones can help to create a sense of depth like darker areas around the subject by applying darker color to the background or to objects that are further away. You can create the illusion of, of distance and depth and make the painting appear more three-dimensional. And in contrast, using Lighter shades and tones can help to bring certain areas of the painting forward and to make them stand out by applying lighter colors to objects that are closer to the viewer that you can really emphasize the volume of. You can create the impression of proximity and make the objects appear 
you know, more prominent in a painting. If you have a tendency to blend a lot, which is great if you want to create good gradients, remember that you don't want to soften the lightest tones too much. It's better to give them a little bit of texture and not over blend to allow them to stand out and pop and be very opaque, very thick and textures. Tones can be used in combination with texture to add depth and, and this impression of, of volume, the impression that you can touch it. By using different tones of the same color, you can create an impression of texture. And you can also use the texture of the paint itself and this double interaction can create a lot of depth and, and make your painting really visually interesting. Overall, by using different shades and tones in your paintings, you can create depth, texture, contrast, everything that's going to bring variety to your work. By experimenting with different combinations of colors and tones, you can discover new and creative ways to use these techniques in your paintings. Remember, color mixing is an art, and the more you practice, the better you'll become. So grab your palette and your oil paints and start experimenting. I can't wait to see what you create. If you want to learn more about the actual theory of color harmony, composition, you can watch this next video. Thanks for watching, a big thank you to everyone supporting my work on Patreon, and as always, the link is in the description below as well as the links to both my courses, my oil painting course and my color course. And until next time, joy and inspiration to you. Bye.